Hello, everyone, and welcome to our virtual new and returning student orientation. My name is Janet McHugh, and I'm the school nurse at the high school. I'm going to cover a lot of information in a short amount of time. So if you, if, so if you have any questions after the presentation, please feel free to call or email me, and my email and direct line to the nurse's office are on the slide. The nurse's office is staffed by myself, your school nurse, and Mrs. Evans, our health aide. Both of us care for the students when they are sick or injured, so you may receive a phone call from either one of us. Our regular hours are Monday through Thursday, 7.45 to 3.45, and Friday, 7.45 to 3.15. We are available before homeroom and after school is dismissed if your child would need us for anything. However, during the pandemic and remote learning, our hours may be adjusted, but I am still available by phone and email for your questions and concerns. All sick kids leaving through the nurse's office are dismissed through the B9 entrance for pickup, which is the entrance on the side of the building by the Fine Arch Theater and Unit Principal's Office. Physicals. All sports physicals should be submitted directly to the athletic department. All other physicals, including new student physicals and the state required physicals for juniors are submitted to me. I don't need the original, and if you would like to email or fax them to me, this is a great option for submitting and also allows you to retain the original copy in case you would need it for anything else like a work permit. Actually, any forms that need to be turned into me can be emailed or faxed and decreases the chances of students forgetting to drop them off and being carried around in backpacks for long periods of time, which from my experience happens a lot in high school. Immunizations. We follow the requirements set forth by the Allegheny County Health Department for immunizations, and according to the county and state health departments, we still need immunization records, whether we are brick and mortar or remote learning. Students coming from within the district from Jefferson Middle School and Mellon are okay and do not owe anything unless you've specifically heard from me. For all new students that started the enrollment process by August 20th, if any additional vaccines were needed, I sent a letter by mail indicating what immunizations were missing and are still needed. If you haven't already, please submit them as soon as possible. And if you're unsure or have any questions, contact me. For students who started the enrollment process after August 20th, I will contact you if there's any missing immunizations. The only requirement left for K through 12 school immunizations is the MCV4 meningococcal booster that's given when the students turn 16. And this isn't required for entry into school until their senior year. Seniors, if you haven't already, you will need to submit this. To all the freshman families, I will be emailing you a health history form sometime over the next month. This is the same form that all new students complete with enrollment. So the last time you completed this form may have been when you enrolled your child in kindergarten. Things may have changed since then, so please complete and return it to me once you receive it. Emergency medical contact information on parent dashboard. It is very, very important to review this and click submit annually as it's used in both emergencies and for giving permission for your child to leave school when they were sick. New families in the district can complete this for the first time by logging on to the parents dashboard account. If you are having trouble creating a parent account, contact Jenna Stein in the principal's office for assistance. Parents can enter up to four emergency contacts, and parents, remember to include yourselves as one or two of the contacts. Remember that anyone you include on the emergency contacts has the authority to give verbal permission for your child to leave school and go home. Emergency contacts don't have to be able to physically pick the student up. They can give permission for the student to go home with someone else. Under normal circumstances and in the past, as long as I have your permission and the student feels up to it, Students were permitted to walk home from school sick or drive themselves home if they drove to school. So again, please remember when adding the emergency contacts that anyone listed as an emergency contact has permission to allow your child to leave the building ill. I do want to note, however, that due to the global pandemic, allowing students to walk home if they have symptoms related to the COVID-19 virus is currently under review. When students are sick, they have to be dismissed to the nurse's office. If they are texting you that they don't feel well, instruct them to go see the nurse and I will give you a call. I will be calling you or any emergency contact from my landline in the nurse's office and not from the student's cell phone. This is for safety reasons. Some students in the past have been a bit creative with the contact list in their phone as mom or dad who may or may not have been mom or dad. So again, this is a safety issue. And lastly, 
The emergency contact page also has a place to note medical conditions or medications a student takes at home. Please keep this updated as it helps not only me, but is shared with the EMTs in case of an emergency. Medications in school. The district policy for medications is the same as a high school as it was K through eight. All medications, including over-the-counter meds like Tom's, Tylenol, and Advil, need MD orders signed on or after July 1st, 2020, and the orders need to be specific. I am not allowed to accept MD orders that state Tylenol for package directions. All medication must be dropped off to the nurse's office and picked up by a parent or guardian and must be in its original and sealed packaging with a valid expiration date. Please do not bring in a small plastic bag filled with ibuprofen pills. I won't be able to accept them. Students are permitted to self-carry their emergency medication on their person, which includes their EpiPens, inhalers, and diabetic supplies if the following three requirements are met. Number one, they have a signed doctor's order dated after 7-120 for the medication, and the MD writes that the student can self-carry and self-administer their medication. Number two, they have a signed parental permission form allowing them to self-carry and self-administer their medication. And number three, they come to me and we complete a self-medication assessment so that I can assure they understand when and how to use their medication properly. Authorization for medication forms and self-carry parental permission slips are on the district website under health services and forms. Currently, the only parental self-carry permission form listed is for EpiPens. The inhaler and di diabetic supply self-carry forms will be added soon. If you would need those two permission forms before they're added, please let me know and I will get them to you. I did want to note that students are permitted to carry and use cough drops and the PTSA has generously supplied my office with cough drops for students who need them. So a special, so a special thank you to the PTSA for our cough drop supply. Illness and COVID-19. If your child is ill, have them stay home and do not come to school. Students going home sick should be picked up as soon as possible and a doctor's clearance may or may not be needed in order to return to school, depending on the reason the child is sent home. All students must self-screen at home before coming into the building, and please keep them home if they are experiencing symptoms such as fever or chills, coughing, shortness of breath or difficulty breathing, fatigue with muscle or body aches, new loss of taste, New loss of taste or smell, sore throat, congestion and runny nose, nausea, vomiting, nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea. The district follows the guidelines from the Allegheny County Health Department concerning infectious disease. If you have any questions on whether or not to keep your child home ill, please refer to the district website for specifics on when to stay home. All students are required to have face coverings to enter the building. If they are not wearing a face covering, they cannot enter the building. If your student has a mask exemption, all mask exemptions require a physician's order signed by a licensed provider that clearly states the student cannot wear a mask and the diagnosis. All mask exemptions should be submitted to the nurse's office. And as you've heard many times in the past several months, I just want to reiterate to continue to practice good hygiene and hand washing, whether at home or at school. Gym excuses, crutches, elevators, and concussions. A parent can excuse their child from gym for up to one week with a written note. Any injury keeping a student out of gym for more than one week requires a doctor's note. If a doctor takes a student out of gym, they cannot return to gym or dance until a doctor clears them to return. We will need the MD signed clearance note prior to allowing the student to return to gym or dance. Gym notes can be signed by an MD, DO, CRNP, which is a nurse practitioner or a physician's assistant. Per state law, gym notes signed by RNs are not legally valid and cannot be accepted. So please check your excuse before leaving the doctor's office to make sure it is not signed by an RN. Nurse practitioners are okay, RNs are not. If you are going to an urgent care clinic or ER and it turns out to be a minor injury, try to get an end date, for example, if it's a sprained ankle and the doctor says to stay off of it for two weeks and if feeling fine, there's no need to return and you can resume normal activity, then get a note with an end date that specifies student may return to gym in two weeks. 
If it's a serious injury like a possible ACL tear and you're referred to orthopedics, then there's no need for an end date because you will be following up with the doctor again. It is very difficult to track down a provider in an ER or urgent care setting to get a clearance gym note. So again, if it's a minor injury, try to get an end date and save yourself a lot of time in running around. We do need MD orders for crutches at school. Do not send your child to school with crutches from a sibling or friend. If the injury is bad enough that they cannot bear their own weight, it should be evaluated by a medical professional. We also need MD, MD orders for an elevator key. Again, if the injury is so severe that they cannot do steps, it should be evaluated by a medical professional. I can and do accept crutch orders and requests for elevator keys from our district athletic trainers. If your child is a student athlete and treated by one of the athletic trainers, and the trainer thinks they need crutches or should use the ele elevator, the trainer just has to email me so I'm aware and I can give the student an elevator key. If your child sustains a concussion, and I hope they don't, but give all concussion documentation to me and I will forward to appropriate personnel, including the principals, counselors, teachers, and the athletic department if they play a sport. I am the point person for concussions. To recap, the rules for doctor's notes are the same for at home or remote learning as they are for gym held in the brick and mortar setting. If a doctor removes your child from gym, your child cannot return to gym until the doctor writes a written note clearing them to return. And last but not least, special needs. If there are any special circumstances that you think I should be aware of, please consider sharing them with me as well as their teachers. The more I'm aware of, the better I can take care of your child. Thank you for your time and attention, and I will turn this over to the next speaker. Thank you.